Howdy folks, Chris McLean back with yet another episode of the show. And in the studio today, I've got Regina from V Agency. They're an experiential marketing agency that connects brands to people by engaging and memorable experiences. Each experience is, cre is created specifically for the purpose and outcome for a brand or business. And the objective and goal focused, they work across a range of different industries. Love a bit of experiential, haven't had a too many or any experiential agencies on the show and close something close to my heart i ran a sort of emerging tech experiential agency for a good number of years so excited to get into all things experiential thanks for being here oh thanks chris thanks for having me <laughs> no pleasure pleasure um yeah so I, I ran a essentially an experiential agency we sort of did more in the emerging tech big interactive projections mm. and that kind of stuff space, like installations yeah. and events and that kind of thing. So I don't know if that's yeah. exactly the kind of stuff that you do, but I do love a, a good experience. So Yeah. Uh... We we don't we don't do that. However, I'm so interested in doing more of it. I think that's really <laughs> impactful, sort of mm, yeah, for mm. that project mapping and projections. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. So take us through what you do do and and how did this all sort of get started for you? Yeah, so my background, I've got hospitality, HR, business consulting background, events, um, and I worked at an experiential marketing agency, advertising okay. agency, doing all of their activations with the team. Um, and, yeah, just like I think a lot of people in agency land uh, mm. got a little bit of burnout, yeah, um, yeah. you know, burning the candle at both ends, you know, so much client entertaining um mm -hmm. you know a lot of pressure from you know as a global agency so you know there's kpis and targets that had to be met all of the time um yeah and i think just pushing it too hard and a um, lot of travel which now mm -hmm. you know obviously that's yeah. changed for a lot of people as well but you know I, I recall one day i was in three different states in one day um going yeah. to client meetings which now just seems crazy right like now that we yeah. we know we can do meetings on zoom and every other station. platform <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so I definitely won't be going back to that. I know that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got a bit of burnout and then took the this big scary risk that, you know, a lot of agency owners do take when they're starting their own agency and, and kind of crossed my fingers, um, brought with me some really great clients that I've had in the past um, who trusted me and wanted to work with me again. So I left knowing that I had some work to, to go straight into. Um, yeah, and then started the agency probably about a year and a half or two years before we went into lockdown. So um, obviously yeah, right. that's been really interesting for all of us <laughs> mm, in so mm. many different ways. Um, but, yeah, I think, yeah, it was a scary risk. I knew I, I needed to do it um, for myself. And, you know, I think that there was there's just so many amazing rewards that come out of you know, running an agency out, mine's very small. I've just recruited three new people um, after lockdown because we sort of went into a great hibernation. So it's really nice to sort yeah. of be coming back out and knowing there's a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to be a pretty interesting um, type of agency to have been running over lockdown. Obviously, yeah. events dried up, going out in public dried up. Yeah. Um, so how, yeah. how did that look for you? I imagine being an experiential agency, it's all about people in places, events, exactly. having a, an in-person yeah. experience. So did you, were you able to kind of map that into digital virtual space or was it literally you, had, you sort of just had to go, you had to ghost out yeah. for a couple of years and then you've you just sort of <laughs> come back? Really good question. With the lockdowns. Yeah, and I think that there um, has been a variety of different um, experiences and activations mm -hmm. which we've done. Some we were able to continue with, some we were able to shift online, some became, um, some were postponed several times. I had a conference which I was organising. Uh, it was a two, a three-day conference in five locations across Victoria. Oh, wow. and um, that got postponed twice until we sort of advised the CEO of the business that, you know, we really need to consider putting it online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then, you know, a lot of other events that, you know, and, and experiences and activations that we were doing sort of, I think the most challenging thing for, I think, businesses like ours and agencies like ours and probably so many others 
particularly in a hospitality and experiences, it was the stop start and the uncertainty mm, and mm. not knowing when we were able to sort of reactivate, um, when we were able to plan, you know, a lot of time yeah. and goes into sort of planning these kind of experiences. So I think, yeah. you know, we'd sort of, yeah, we'd, we'd just kind of pencil in a date and work towards it knowing you know, deep down that it's potentially going to get postponed again or cancelled and so mm. much work goes into postponing experiences. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So having having run an agency very similar where it's it's all about there's a lot of logistics and there's moving parts and you're planning, you know, months ahead just to get stuff delivered, particularly, as you said, if you're operating across multiple states and multiple locations, it's months and months of planning plus all the logistics trying to get things in the right place at the right time. So I can't imagine trying to do that when you've, as you said, you kind of pencil in a date and cross your fingers and hope that (laughs) that state's not going to be in lockdown at the time. So it must have been, it must have been massive to have to deal with that. Um, How, how, what was that process of trying to work out how to shift you know, experiential in-person events to virtual spaces or digital versions of those things and set and follow up to that. Was that, did you find that was actually effective? Was it, did it, did you get similar results, better results, worse results? Sort of how did that all really impact yeah. that? Um, yeah, really great questions. Um, so I'm not a technical person by any mm. means and, <laughs> um, you know, I'm, very quick to put my hand up and admit that and call on an expert when required. And I think that whole shift of moving an event or a conference uh, or experience online for me personally was really nerve wracking. Um, You know, not, not having those skills in, you know, trained skills, then having to sort of outsource and trust, um, but still fall under my responsibility was quite a big challenge. And I think one of the, the biggest challenges with that, we, um, for we were running a conference for young people and a lot of the people working they were incredibly amazing well driven you know highly driven um really smart switched on young people um but they were sort of running the conference with me and it got to we were actually at a stage this was the event that was postponed a couple of times that was across the, the state in a few different locations it, we all went um and did it from at home basically so that yeah. as an event director you know an agency <laughs> owner that's really scary because you can't walk up to everybody and say how are you going you know do you need to take a break um you know mm. do you, are you going okay with all the technology so um everyone was at home running this conference you know and we had a, a few of them were quite you know technically minded so they were sort of doing a lot of the you know the technology of the online event so yeah really nerve-wracking but one thing it did really teach me with the postponing of events and and having to turn things online really quickly was that um, it sort of, I sort of learned to relinquish control of a lot of events as well and experiences. Mm, So I, I, you know, being, you know, project managing large events, I'm, you know, really need to know all of the detail, every little step along the way. And it, it taught me to sort of trust other people and also when so many things can be outside of your control and as an event director and you know an experience you know coordinator or whatever you you want to you need to have backup plans with backup plans with backup plans basically in case anything goes wrong but um i learned you know with the changing of the restrictions and the uncertainty of when you know event could actually happen I just had to take a step back and, you know, calm down and know that it was outside of my control and just do what I could and have backup plans where I needed to and then kind of leave everything up to the gods, you know, a little bit. And and I think that was a really important learning for me, I think, you know, to sort of be able to, um, yeah, just trust a little bit, Mm, you know, trust other people and trust that it's all going to work out and trust that, you know, I don't need to be involved every single step of the way as well. So that was really nice learning for me. And I'm trying yeah. really hard now <laughs> that we're sort of back live doing experiences to make sure that I implement that in my everyday as well and just mm. take it easy and not overstress about everything that, you know, that I often yeah. don't have control of. And then yeah. the second part to your question, I guess, is... Um, massive diminished experience of <laughs> online events and experiences. Mm. You know, I think everyone, you know, we've all said it many times, Zoom fatigue and everything. However, 
what I did learn is that it made our events and experiences accessible to everybody, you know, across right. the country, across okay. the world. Yeah. And um, we actually, you know, had more people buying tickets to events as well, which right. were really great, you know, and people on the other side of Australia and Darwin, et cetera. So that was really nice as well. So I kind of feel mm. like hybrid events are around to stay for that reason. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. Are you mm. the, the experience itself might not have been as, as optimal as it may have been mm. in person, but you actually got more people and more more visitation. That you, you sort of got that scale because of the yes. of the digital exposure. So it's yeah. a pretty interesting, sort of a sort of a, a win loss maybe, <laughs> a, a, draw, a draw even. But I guess that yeah. that's that's kind of the expectation almost now, right? Is this sort of yeah. you know Zoom fatigue and on, online events and that kind of thing? We sort of expect that this is yeah. going to be part of our life going forward now and exactly. we're kind of used to having the technical issues of yeah. cameras and microphones and setting <laughs> yeah, all this stuff. So exactly. we sort of all become, you know, tech experts over the last couple of years. Yeah. So it's really forced that. But do you th- so right. you talk you're interesting about that sort of hybrid model. Is that mm. something you think you'll sort of push going forward? Do you think you're just going to have to do that? Because this yeah. is probably uh, this in and right. out of lockdown is probably going to be for a while. Exactly. Yeah. And mm. I think... Um, to be honest, it's it's extra work, you know, to have mm. the technology component streaming or recording um, and then a platform to have it, you know, available to people afterwards. Yeah. You're running a, a physical event and an online event kind of mm. almost mm. at the same time. However, mm. yeah, I think the accessibility thing is a huge piece. You know, people can listen to something or watch something while they're cooking dinner, while they're going for a walk. You know, you don't have mm. to be... Mm. Um, present at that exact moment that the meeting or the presentation or the conference is happening so I think you know that's a really big thing that people have grown to appreciate and you know kind of need in their lives as well and Mm -hmm. I think people have become really forgiving as well you know with all of the streaming and the technology involved you know you we've seen kids you know do all sorts of walk out naked you know behind <laughs> you know when they're really important yeah. meetings and stuff and everyone's just like oh that's just the way the world is now you know so I mm-hmm. think I think I don't love hybrid but I definitely think it's here to stay for those reasons you know I think yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah I, I walk the dog and, and catch up on a, on a meeting that I might have missed mm. yesterday because you know and it yeah. takes away that stress you know you can't oh mm. I, I don't have to have back-to-back meetings all day um, or reschedule meetings all the time and just I'm not going to mm. make that conference or that event or whatever but send me the recording and I, I still really want to listen to it and be part of yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah that's really that interesting is- that, that that sort of time manual that that asyncing right you don't have to be yeah. at the event to get the the benefit of, yeah. of attending that event um so yeah. Yeah, it's actually re- re- really interesting that that hybrid model gives you that um for people that do want to go and show up and be there on time you can be but that sort of yeah. you can get the benefit of that event without having it in real time um exactly so, yeah, like a, an interesting outcome mm. um, mm. are you saying so in terms of the the types of events is it all is it generally sort of conferences and and that sort of thing or is it sort of pop-ups and activations and that kind of stuff as well that you that yeah you run. so um pop-ups and activations is where we want to get back to and mm. you know obviously with the last few years you know people are, are not able to spend money doing that you know in mm. terms of advertising and marketing um it's definitely an area that i love and that i want to get back to and i think there's really rewarding value seeing a brand say we want to change our target audience um, you know, we want to reposition ourselves, you know, what kind of experience can you come up with that can connect mm. us with, you know, our dream new audience or whatever. So yeah. I love that. And I love seeing, you know, sales increase or market share increase and all of that sort of stuff. So that's definitely, yeah, where we want to be. But I think mm. with mm. all the lockdown, you know, we've been working with the city of Melbourne and created an augmented reality treasure hunt through the CBD yeah, nice. because it was self-guided, um, you know, COVID safe, it was outdoors, you know, and that's mm. still running now. So I think, yeah, the, a lot of a lot of our work has sort of shifted a bit, mm. you know, and um, yeah, back in that technology space again. But I think, yeah, yeah. really want to get back to activations. But, you know, food and wine events um, we've mm. got coming up, small festivals and things as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I think that, that's, a, that's a really interesting space as well is that that kind of blend of, physical and virtual like we said like an like an ar treasure hunt where you you walk in or like you know pokemon go which was massive what five years ago and everyone was just walking around (laughs) 
bumping into poles and <laughs> bumping into each other, chasing <laughs> dragons or whatever, whatever they were looking after. But yeah. it's, it's an interesting, I think, again, that's, that's sort of another type of hybrid, right, where you're mm. in actual space and walking down an actual Melbourne CBD street, but yeah. you're looking for gold coins or you're sort of hunting um, information yeah. in the in VR through your phone or AR through your phone. I think that that's again a, a really interesting space. And again, we sort of playing with that sort of stuff in almost yeah. God, almost a decade ago now. Yeah. Sort of. So it's good yeah. to say that stuff's still around. Cool. And um, so yeah, obviously the, the the tech stacks are much much better and faster, and you can do more and and much more accessible and accepted these days yes. as well. Um, so exactly. Been around and- and- yeah, and I think, you know, the the users like us, you know, mm. the lay people or whatever you want to call it, the non-techie people now know, um, yeah, they understand what it is a little yeah. better, right? So yeah. they're more yeah. willing to get involved in it. Yeah, yeah. And, and brands as well. Brands exactly. as well. Yeah. I mean, I imagine today like we're literally selling that same thing. We were trying to sell that thing 10 years ago when yeah. – there was, you know, five examples of, of <laughs> AR on QR codes. You had there's like a real a BMW did like a little a car driving around on a QR code. Oh, that's cool. Um, that was like 2008, 2009. And brand, yeah. even brands like really didn't understand it. So it's yeah. really, really cool to see. Obviously that shift over a decade, it's, it's yeah. grown so much. That, do you find that brands almost expect that now it's like part of their part of their marketing suite they go right Definitely. we're going to have a website we're going to have an app we're going to have something ar yes. vr digital virtual yeah um, yeah exactly yeah. because you know it's it's something different you know it, even mm. though like you said it's been around for a really long time but you know and you mentioned qr codes and mm. that, yeah mm. they have been around a long time but now yeah. ha- we can't survive without them so <laughs> you know it's mm. just yeah the the consumer behavior change the shift you know the mentality of yeah mm. this is just how it works now so yeah. definitely i think brands are like people people love it you know with what we're doing in the city of melbourne it just adds another layer on top of the mm. beautiful existence that's already in the city um yeah. but yeah you know and because we did that um clients saw that and then they said we want to do that as well so now it's happening elsewhere and yeah, cool. yeah so i think yeah people yeah people kind of want to do something a little bit different as well mm-hmm. don't they you know try yeah. different things and yeah yeah, yeah. I, think, I think again i think that's a really nice model that, that sort of blend of action like i'm actually in the real world rather than being like fully metaverse or fully vr yeah. which is again kind of things seem to be heading into the meta and into the metaverse and into fully virtual um yeah. world so i think it's, it's nice to maintain a semblance of i mean i'm actually still in the street i'm getting some sunshine i'm doing some some actual yeah, exercise exactly. but but still sort of tapping into that that sort of digital um, virtual component yeah. at the same time. I think it's a su- yeah. super fun space. Um, so aside from that sort of tech stuff, um, what, what sort of brands are you working with? Are these top-tier brands, global brands, sort of SMEs? Um, who, who, where's the appetite? Yeah, I think there's at the moment there um, there's a lot of interest, you know, from councils. Probably not the most exciting okay. client to yeah. work with, really. But yeah. um, you know, in terms of spend, uh, we've experienced that they have much, they, they have an obligation as well to mm, sort of drive yeah. visitation back to their precincts and to sort of help yeah, yeah. local businesses grow and get back on their feet and everything. And I know the state mm. government's been really supportive with giving a lot of local councils some funding to do to yeah. create experiences in in those kind of in some of those precincts, which is really nice. But um, you know, we work with um, Australian National Uni up in Canberra and and a couple of universities and TAFEs down here as well. So, um, yeah, the, I think, you know, there's, yeah, a, a lot of work that needs to be done from us reconnecting with businesses again, you know, now that they're all sort of coming back and ready to create experiences and get back on their feet. I think there's still yeah. a little bit of hesitancy, though, from a lot of brands um, obviously these kind of experiences can cost a lot of money and yeah. there's no guarantee at the moment, you know, until the federal government brings out this event insurance, you know, if if um, events need to be postponed or whatever experiences need to be postponed, mm. it's really expensive to do that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you can lose money if you're paying deposits on things, you know, some, you know, cancelling them. Some places will only give you 50% back. So yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's still, I think it's going to take a long time, you know, for people... Mm. For consumers and businesses and brands to sort of start trusting that there is stability out there with experiences, so I think yeah, mm. it's, it's going to take a little while to sort of 
get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a really good point. Is that like obviously like city of Melbourne, um, very very mm. active in like okay, everyone yeah. left the city. Like the the CBD has been a ghost yeah. town for a couple of years now. How do we actually incentivize people to start coming back in and exactly. interacting with the city again? Um, yeah, and they're doing a great but, job at that. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, and again, yeah. for like for, for, from from my perspective of ten years ago, councils and that kind of and government had not no interest, but this stuff was so far beyond. I was still trying to get their websites right back then, right? So to yeah. see that like yeah, it's sort of right. like councils and government tend to be kind of the laggards in this um, yes. with this sort of, sort of tech. So it's in, really interesting to see that kind of you know a decade, yeah. sort of ten years later that this yeah. is where that it's finally sort of trickled down to where um, yeah. you know, government entities yeah. are, are willing to invest in this stuff. Um, yeah, so exactly. I personally find that quite fascinating so it's sort of yeah. to watch that trickle down effect where it, um, it, 10 years ago it really was, it was leading top, top tier brands that really wanted to push to have that. It was like first to market. It was really yeah. first to market advantage of we are the first to do an AR experience. We were the yeah. first to do a VR thing. Whereas now everyone's kind of done one. It's like, okay, what's well, like having a website now? Yeah, that's right. Really it works. People like it. Yeah. We're, we're okay mm. with spending money on it now. Totally. Yeah. 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 It was a decade too early. Should have started again. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Funny how things sort of shift over time. But um, mm. that, that's a really good indicator when government starts buying something regularly and has an expectation that it's kind of, it's pretty mainstay. Um, yes. tech, when we're talking about technology or advanced technology, emerging tech. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool. It's been really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we're also working with the City of Melbourne. We've been put on a panel with three other agencies to activate vacant shop fronts in the CBD. Oh, well, cool. So they, they're, City of Melbourne been really proactive with trying mm. to drive, you know, obviously I think the occupancy rate is so low at the moment yeah. you know but they've done some amazing things and the lord mayor sally cap is really behind all the tech mm. you know, yeah or which the augmented reality treasure hunt really behind that um mm. yeah so we're really excited to be working on the vacant shop fronts and we've got like a whole stream of proposals and concepts and pop-ups and you know there's opportunities for brands as well if they want to get involved mm. and, and utilize these vacant shop fronts we create some really cool specky things for people to come and look at and experience interact with yeah yeah it sort of has that um the the effect of like the Maya windows for people who are yes, uh, listening exactly. who, who know Melbourne or you might have something similar in your city where you know every yeah. Christmas you have the Maya windows Maya's a um, big retail outlet here and you have the Maya windows and there's four or five windows every year and they have a theme and they deck them up but you kind of get that kind of thing across you know when mm, you can do it digitally or virtually you can create that same kind of engagement within exactly. storefronts yeah. yeah yeah very very yeah. cool there's yeah. all, always it's cool to say there's always opportunity and chaos right that's sort of, yes that's exactly a... right yeah mm. yeah and yeah. i feel um i feel confident about the future you know especially considering <laughs> the um yeah the nervousness and the mm. uncertainty mm. that you know has been happening for everybody in the past but i feel specifically you know in experiences and agency land i feel really confident that you know, there, there are a lot of opportunities and, you know, whilst not everybody might be prepared to go back to a music festival or, you know, a food mm. and wine event or whatever, uh, I think that there, you know, people, we, we're social beings, right? We're social creatures. Mm. We want to interact and, you mm. know, talk and have fun and laugh and hug and everything. So, yeah, I feel really positive about the future. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've, like, personally, professionally with your agency, you've kind of, mm built that redundancy and built that adaptability into your your operating model now right you've you've kind of exactly. hopefully kind of been through the worst of it or at least you've been yeah. through the ringer and you've come out and you've as you said you've sort of mentally done some adjustment and going okay i need to relinquish exactly. control i need to allow other yeah. people to do what they do well um mm. so you kind of built baking in that redundancy into how you operate so that's something that's going to help you moving forward as well and now that you've done it you kind of built that skill set so if yeah. and when that happens, you know, okay, we're prepared and we, we now also know how to help clients, right? You can exactly. turn something yeah. physical into virtual. It'll happen faster. You'll build a tech stack. You'll sort of get it done better and better over time. So I guess exactly. th th this is the benefit of things going to shit, right? <laughs> and going <laughs> exactly. through volatility and uncertainties 
if yeah. you can adapt, you come out better on the on the backside and better capable, better, totally. better able to kind of yeah. you know, deal with that again. Yeah, exactly. And just, yeah, shift your way of thinking a little bit, you know. Mm. I think you, it's so easy to sort of get set in, in a way of, you know, doing things and thinking. And I think, you know, that was a real, yeah, it was a real sort of ground-shaking experience, you know, to sort mm. of just readjust completely and just look at things as they are as well and not, you know, just what you're used to doing. So I think it, mm. it has been good for me specifically for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. awesome. I, I think it's been a, yeah. If nothing else, a really good learning experience for, for everyone mm-hmm. that's been trying to run any type of business now. Um, yes. I said, we speak to a lot of agency owners and it's much easier to keep Facebook campaigns and Google Ads campaigns running in a lockdown than it is <laughs> physical yeah. events. So I feel yeah. for you and uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd <laughs> love to say that you've come out sort of smiling and, and happy and positive on the, the back end of that because like, have, having kind of been in those shoes, I would imagine it would have been yeah. very, very difficult um, yeah. sort of trying to deliver that and maintain client relationships and comms all the way through that process. So yeah. you know, kudos yeah. to you for managing Thank it. Thank you. Um, Thanks good so to much. see you. Positive yeah. and yeah, happy and yeah. enjoying life and enjoying your, your business on the back end of it. Yeah, it's good. It's exciting. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, thanks. R- r- really good stuff. Um, yeah, thank you so much for dropping by. It's been insightful. It's been obviously something sort of close to my heart from yeah. previous agency work. Um, where, if people do want to find out more about you, connect with you, um, where are some of the best places for them to do that? Um, jump on the website. That's probably the best place. Um, give us a call, send us an email. It's Ola, H O L A, at V agency vwe agency.com.au um yeah reach out get in touch have a chat you know we love collaborating with other agencies brands you know just yeah doing some mm. really special things to yeah for for everybody you know for the businesses the brands you know we get great joy out of it and good mm. you know big kicks out of doing you know epic experience creating <laughs> experiences for people so yeah mm. Thank yeah, you. super cool, and and quite a, a, a distinct niche and specialization. There's mm. really not many in, in terms of the, the the landscape of marketing agencies. There's it's a quite mm. a you know, experience and um, you know, pop up and activations quite a um, a niche uh, delivery there. So yeah, if there's mm. agency owners out there listening that want to add some of that to your portfolio, give Reggie a call, get yeah. in touch. I'll drop Thank all those you. links in the show notes so you can get connected and add some experience to your uh, marketing mix. Thanks yeah. so much for dropping by, Reggie. It's been Thanks, a blast. Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's been really fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolute pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for yeah. tuning in. Hope you got uh, as much fun and enjoyment out of today as I did. And until next time, we'll see you then. Thanks so much.